<laughs> well, like how you turn that streaming on and then turn that hidden yeah, noise yeah. on. Yeah, it's organisation. <laughs> I've got ah. it all sorted. Raw. Raw. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, it's been pretty slow, actually, for us since November, really. We've been, we've been looking for work. Yeah. More work. Yeah, it's it's slower for us now, um, but we'll see. We'll hopefully, pick up. Do you think change of government actually affects it? I mean, I don't not know. Even anything the government does necessarily, just change of government. Maybe I, I'm not much of our stuff is domestic, so I suppose we're not as not as affected, affected as we would be. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I always like it. Always seemed, you know, that November to March period was is always traditionally um tight for us like, yeah yeah uh i don't know if it's to do with yep. budgets or we are it we? is one o'clock yeah so uh hello everybody uh i'm brooke this is margaret this is nadia hello. got them around the right way because i remember to look out of here instead of there <laughs> um so uh margaret and i are from stickmen media uh we are here streaming the development of our after the light um, zombie survival horror game mm. but today we have a special guest on Nadia from uh, a games company up the corridor Cerebral Fix hello everyone so, <laughs> um, so Nadia's brought a slideshow uh, we could do the slideshow we could just talk about other stuff I mean absolutely <laughs> I, know, I just kind of threw it all in together everything that c you might be interested in okay um, but that's very cool. Oh, well, definitely interested in the game development stuff. So mm -hmm. why don't you tell us a little bit about um, Cerebral Fix? Can we just um, minimise us a little bit so that we can see a bit more of Nadia's wonderful... <laughs> slideshow. Yeah. <laughs> so she's gone to okay. all the trouble. Let's see oh, if yes, I can yes. do that. Oh, we have a bit of a shared history, don't, uh, don't we, our two companies? We do, we do. Uh, and so I wasn't around back then, but uh, you were, I think, back in, so 2007, 2008? 2008 was when we started off. Yeah, yeah. which was Stickmen. Uh, we tried to make some console games. and um, We did make some console yeah. games. And is that, that's all good. And then we, mm. well, we did make some console games, yep. Yeah. And... Uh, then things uh, kind of um, spun off, I mm -hmm. guess, and in, into different areas. Uh, Cerebral Fix was created uh, to kind of concentrate on the more mobile scene that had just, um, I guess, erupted. Yeah, mobile and casual, that was where you guys were going. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, it wasn't, you know, it was 2008 that Apple released their App Store, uh, basically, and changed the kind of whole industry uh, a whole new genre of gaming uh, was Indeed. born uh, in and between Facebook and mobile they changed the profile of the gamer too so mm. it moved from the 18 to 28 year old males to suddenly the 40 <laughs> yeah 40 year old females were yep. actually um, something like 40 percent of the market so I think it's it still just changed everything it's still the case today as well that yeah you're um the biggest gaming demographic is that middle-aged female um which is great because it smashes all sorts of stereotypes uh which which i'm a fan of it absolutely um. does hello enter dreamland i just saw you popping mm -hmm. in there nice to have you with us today yeah so uh yeah so we basically spun off to to look at mobile games facebook yeah the more casual uh kind of market um we didn't really know what we were doing there so the big plan was to um, work on contract work mm -hmm. um so we could could learn how to make games learn the the industry um and and then hopefully make some of our own games we've gotten really good at making other people's games um not so so much our own games although although we're getting well there. The, the, your first big contact as i remember that your first big win was yeah. with a tower defense game it was and so that was one that you sort of made for yourself to put out there and it really had i mean it was a winner for you one way or the other so mm -hmm. yeah tell us um, about that that was uh it's quite a funny story uh i guess um so yeah we made uh this game 
uh, I think it was Saviour. Um, Saviour, yeah. And, uh, and then we got this email in from uh, someone who uh, claimed to be from Electronic Arts, EA, uh, who was saying that they were really liked this tower defence and would we be interested in making them one? Mm -hmm. We, of course, thought it was spam uh, or a scam uh, <laughs> at that, and so we, you know, deleted it, moved on. Uh, luckily, they were persistent because it turned out to be legitimately... <laughs> Uh, EA uh, and we ended up making Transformers um, a Transformers uh, tower defense which was really cool at the time that was our, our start and this it gave us I guess real confidence that hey actually this yeah. is a viable thing we can we can make games um, brought out of a studio in Christchurch and yeah we're working in the center of Christchurch at the time all pre-earthquake yeah yep. um, and yeah yeah, before it all fell down. <laughs> it did, uh, yeah, which I guess that was uh, another big period in our life. At that time we had, um, at the time of the earthquake, we had expanded to 70 people um, and we were juggling multiple um, kind of contracts, but we still didn't quite know really how to manage all that and, mm -hmm. and to deliver. Um, and I think it's, you know, I think you always have this confidence that oh, okay making games that's straight but you know you basically you make a game you make it good and uh you you deliver it but um working working with games it turns out not so straightforward a lesson we've learned <laughs> over and over. the idea that if you make it they will come just not true no, no. you make it and it'll sit there until you show it to somebody you <laughs> make actually it and it will suck ball. them in yeah. somehow yeah or you know yeah, make it and maybe get lucky and and they will come um but yeah, yeah. we still haven't figured out the the secret source to to that we've got a game now that has over a million downloads uh and then you know we do the exact same follow the exact same process and i'll have 10 downloads so you know what is the the secret i don't <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, <laughs> that's encouraging. Not. <laughs> so, did you want? Did you want to actually show us something on your slideshow, or should we? No, oh, I, I just yeah, I just threw um, a bunch of stuff in. Basically, um, just a little bit about me and Cerebral Fix. So, Cerebral Fix, we're now about a fifty-person studio just down the hall from um, from Stickman here, and we've got you know programmers, artists, project managers, um, all those good things that you need to, to make, a, um, make a good game. Uh, and we do tend to concentrate on our work for hire. So we work for places like Disney, Sony, um, EA, uh, which has been really excellent getting to, to work with, you know, the, the elite of the, the industry. They really know what they're doing. Um, you also get an interesting uh, insight into, into how they work, um, which, you, which you learn from, which is great. Um, I started out as a producer uh, mm -hmm. and now, yes, yeah, sort of run the, the day to day. Operation. I remember you as a producer in Hereford Street in the, in the mm. front room there, gathering the guys around and <laughs> laying down the law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, much more, much more, um, what's the word, probably not touchy-feely because that will get me um, a, a lawsuit, yeah. um, but a lot more about team-driven. Um, Actually, you were pretty team-driven at the time, I have to mm. say. I was, I was kidding about the cracking <laughs> um, No, you, you actually had a way of getting people sort of in Invested mm. as well, uh, something I always appreciated from across the room. So, oh, yeah, thank you. No, you, did. Yeah. <laughs> you were doing very well right from the beginning, but I'm no big, doubt matured. <laughs> big believer in ownership. Like mm. the more ownership people can have over the project, the more engaged they are, and you know, the better the product's going to be probably at the at the end of things. So, um, that's my theory anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, how did I get into gaming? Don't well, accidentally click exit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good point. Yep. So yeah, got into go. You know, I've been playing PC games for as long as I can remember. Back uh, so Commander Keen uh, mm -hmm. was was where I was very much that early nineties um, gaming child. So yeah, Commander Keen, Duke Nukem, all of those great two D. Um, kind of kind of games and then then things you know kind of got um 
spunkier with the the 3D graphics. You know, you had Wolfenstein, you had Quake, like, you know, and they just blew your mind graphics graphics wise. Uh, and then I took a step backwards. Um, so uh, I got my I got really got into gaming. The, the thing that I um, first spent, you know, the hundreds of hours that you invest uh, as a gamer was in muds. So multi-user dungeons. Mm -hmm. um, I now have a you know typing speed of about 96 words per minute, so <laughs> it really paid off um, for me. Uh, yeah, in terms of data entry, I am your girl. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was um, that was I guess at the time the early 2000s where um, muds were were the the precursors to MMOs. Mm -hmm. You know, it was where you could get on online with other people, play with other people, um, and you know, and the, the servers could actually handle uh, multiple multiple people in it. And it, you know, and then obviously things like WoW came out. Um, around the same time you had things like Age of Conan, Guild Wars, so it was that massive um, MMO um, explosion sort of around the the mid to 2000s uh, was when I graduated from tech space. So I never hear RPGs. people say mid 2000s but they I've always heard it, well I've always wondered what it should be called and for a while it was called the noughties. Mid noughties <laughs> yeah, yeah I think so yeah. But yeah the mid 2000s uh, it just sounds so <laughs> right. Mid 2000s yeah. I, I always avoid saying it I just I just give a year <laughs> around Sorry. 2005. <laughs> yeah, I think I think WoW was out what two thousand and three, two thousand and four. Okay. Um, so yeah, about that time, and the rest is is kind of history for. for Interesting me. Fa fact about mud games. Interesting fact. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting <laughs> fact around about mud games. Oh, um, wow. You know the taxonomy of gamers that we actually Bartle. use. Richard Bartle. Yeah. From, yeah, from mud games actually. Yeah. All based on yeah, because uh, he actually made uh, Circle Mud, didn't he? Like he was one of the original creators of Mud. That's so, right. So yeah. you know, there's uh, and these days there are thousands of Muds um, still still out there um, that p people still play, um, which is great because you know the level of immersion for a, you know it just being text is is mind blowing. It's almost more so because you've got to use the, your imagination. imagination to sort of put you in there. Yeah, um, and I've never had, uh, you know, been in a combat game that's as, you know, you, you used to, we call it the PK shakes, like, because the adrenaline and your, <laughs> you know, your fingers are doing this and you're typing, you're like, oh, run away, run away. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it really does um, kind of, uh, connect with you on a very physical level, kind of like VR, you know, where um, I was always amazed the first time I went into VR, which was that uh, roller coaster one, mm -hmm. how it was tricking my mind and, and, and giving me physical True. reactions. Um, so, yeah. Um, was it the lounge room roller coaster or the other? I can't remember. The lounge room one I was so oh, cool because you really no, did feel small. That came that came second. I think it was the big one that Henry uh, the the demo Pro, that, yeah. made, that oh, round right. the rooftops. Normal. Oh roller. yeah, yeah, yeah round yeah. the round the city. I remember. Yeah, that. and your yeah. like stomach would do that. And you'd be <laughs> leaning. Yeah, yeah. And you, you had to fly that gap at one point. Mm, and oh, just <laughs> uncomfortable. And um, but it really kind of goes to show that you know playing games does can have this physical um effect on you so yeah that's um i started in gaming from the time i was um yeah just tiny um from the the moment i first could really and and have yet to give it up so <laughs> i see many positive things in gaming you you know obviously there's all these media stories about uh, everything that's bad about gaming. You know, it's making uh, kids violent and, mm -hmm. and all this rubbish. But um, I worked in an internet cafe for, for a few years. Actually, a few of us at Cerebral Fix did. And I got to see the positive side of gaming. So the fact that it gives you these social structures, these um, social opportunities that you might not otherwise get. It gives you an opportunity to be the badass um, <laughs> exactly. as well. And, you know, to be the the, um, the grand poobah or the, the top dog um, in certain things, which you might not 
be it, you know, do in real life in sports or, uh, you know, school or whatever. So I think, you know, there are major positives to, to gaming and, um, yeah. I'm a big proponent of it. Absolutely. It's, it's amazing how important some of it is, really. Mm. Like, you know, you know, bachelor's degree, post, you know, postgraduate degree. Yeah. But I'm the fourth deadliest assassin in Oceania <laughs> in Black Flag. You yes. know, that, that's real. Right. <laughs> right. More important. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so my first game, uh, I didn't, didn't have a name as far as I know. I built myself a kit computer in high school. It was a mini scamp, I think they were called. Yeah. And it had uh, eight LEDs and eight dip switches for actually programming it. And the first thing I did was this sort of <laughs> pong game where the light moved backwards and forwards between the LEDs and you had wow. to wow. That yeah, is awesome. use the switches. Yeah. That's how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond that, I bought myself uh, later, after I was married, I bought myself a Sinclair ZX80. Mm. And I used to type in the basic programs from 80 oh, Micro or Micro 80, whatever the magazine was, mm -hmm. and do that sort of stuff. That is badass, man. Yeah, That's yeah. Old, yeah, old school cool. <laughs> and the first one I programmed was Space Invaders. I had a TRS-80 Model 3 and I got one of their fancy graphics cards and I learned uh, Z80 Assembler so that I could actually get it working yeah, yeah. St still <laughs> in dabble reasonable time. In that? <laughs> uh, last, well, Assembly? I did something for a client recently, so I'm, I have kept my hand in a little bit. Well, there yeah. you go. Sorry, yeah. Not it's as much as I'd like to, especially now I see the guys having so much fun with Unreal. I'm like, Oh, I want to do that. Yeah, we've <laughs> only just started in Unreal uh, as well. So, yeah, we've been, um, I guess because we've um, been mainly concentrating on mobile, um, it, it kind of hasn't come up in Unity. It's mm -hmm. um, so good. So, so good. Yeah. Um, but still, yeah. Almost all of our customer work is um, Unity still. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think Unreal is, uh, you know, the the proving now Unreal is you know, you can bring it to mobile. Um, so it's becoming a viable um, kind of option for us. And in general, you know, I was playing um, the latest Tekken, uh, mm -hmm. which was made in Unreal. And oh my God, it is gorgeous. Um, like just particle effects up the wazoo and, you know, all of these environmental effects. And, you know, it's just crazy what you can do um, with, with Unreal these days. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to to getting into it. What are you guys doing? Uh, so we're doing After stuff? the Light. So the zombie game is actually being done in Unreal. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing seeing the artists getting, essentially becoming technical artists. So getting yeah. in there and learning to do shaders and all the rest of it. With oh the God, shaders system. though, scary. Uh, well, Lincoln did one that uh, was basically, uh, we needed moss on rocks and normally we'd go and paint that in. Mm. And then if you have to move a rock or whatever, you go, oh, repaint it you know yeah, yeah so what he's done is he's got rocks that grow moss on the top so that the te textures the top with the moss texture mm -hmm. and if you rotate the rock then it, the texture moves around to the top so it's only so when the normals clever. are up that it is it's great it's so clever yeah, yeah. yeah. if you want to fix it then all you have to do later if you want to create patches in it is you go to scrape some off but it's not the same as having to go through and actually put all the moss there yeah that's so the amazing. moment he sets up a cave it's already got the moss all in it it's great so quick yeah, yeah. no like the tools that we now have access to as game developers uh, it's quite mind-blowing and the fact that you know unreal even <laughs> oh nice yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> the great thing is too it's not you know it's not just us prof you know professional game developers that that have access to this now everyone yeah. can you know anyone can go and download unreal or unity can publish a game live uh with it and yeah that's that's pretty fun i always tell kids that at the colleges when we when we do the talks at the colleges mm. go and get yourself a copy of blender it's free get yeah. yourself a copy of unity or unreal go and have some fun make some stuff yeah even um so, you know there's all the asset stores and stuff mm -hmm. as well so unreal i think um have like any game that they make or any game that they um try to make and then fail at making <laughs> you know fail at releasing they release all those assets absolutely um, a lot of the um cave assets for mm -hmm. after the light are actually from the soul cave pack that unreal released that's so yeah. cool yeah so yeah there's it's so accessible uh i think yeah um way more so than it was back when you're yeah 
programming LEDs <laughs> and, um, and, you know, and in the 90s, even, you know, even when we first started, mm-hmm. um, there weren't these to- back ends as a service uh, is another thing. I remember um, sort of about 2003, we decided to make our own kind of back end as a service and that took a year and um, mm-hmm. all sorts of problems. And then, you know, these days you've just got ones that you can pay monthly or you know even allow you free accounts up to a certain amount of traffic a month so game sparks and yeah yeah um all these things so it's it's so much easier these days to absolutely um to accept. obviously there's a lot more games out there though too so there say, are so a lot more like competition the music scene really isn't it yeah it's very very accessible it's very easy there's a lot of platforms but there's and everybody lot. can do it yeah <laughs> Which means everyone but is doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I guess there's a, a bigger need to stand out. Uh, Absolutely. These days. Some of it filters itself, of course. <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. So the thing about um, after the light is what we've always wanted is something that's an absolutely beautiful experience for people to actually be in. Mm. So yes, we want to scare you, but we well, want yeah. to scare you <laughs> in the <laughs> most beautiful way. We want to have these magnificent looking zombies and bosses mm. <laughs> that terrify the you. Jesus yeah. out of you. <laughs> Excellent. I can't wait to see what you guys have. Like, how far oh, through? Well, Blinken can probably put the helmet on you today. Blinken. Excellent. Did you say? Yeah. Blinken. Lincoln, I said, not yeah. Blinken. <laughs> so, Link. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't okay. me. Incoming fire from the studio. <laughs> So Lincoln's picked up 3D and stuff then too, and because um, uh, he used to be 2D. Um, so you guys, you're more flexible. Oh, uh, yeah, we we basically encourage people to actually work with the engine. Yeah. So you you guys too too yeah. right with Unity and stuff Unity, like that. Unity, yeah. And so Lincoln's been taking the assets from Soulcave and all the rest of it and actually assembling our levels. Mm. Um, so yeah, so the latest version is on his machine. He gets to check out everything. Um, the reason for that, and this is what I really love about what Unity makes possible, is instead of having the programmers doing all that heavy lifting and getting that stuff sorted out, yeah. people who have got a good eye for beautiful actually get to do that stuff yeah. and lay it out. So when you're in one of Lincoln's caves, it is designed with heart. You know, it's absolutely fantastic. He's got f- fireflies and glow worms and things like that in there he's got you know. just those those touches yeah. those elements that yeah a, a programmer wouldn't even really think yeah. about uh, beautiful water and little yeah. droplets from the ceiling and all the rest of it you'll appreciate when you're in there we cool. should put you in there in fact what we should have done was made an episode of putting you in yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> actually when we get the shooting of the uh, zombies better because at the moment physics is wrong they, I keep saying they fall like bags of jelly because <laughs> the physics constraints aren't in them Ooh. so you shoot them and they go <laughs> <laughs> well the physics isn't wrong it's just prototype yeah mm. so yeah so once you shoot them they go under ragdoll okay. control mm. but without the proper constraints on them sort of the elbows can bend the wrong way and all sorts <laughs> yeah. of things so they, they look poor zombies <laughs> poor zombies <laughs> I, I think yeah. it's better like that <laughs> it is funny watching them slide down the wall when you shoot them off the bridge that's always Marvelous. funny but um, but yeah, when we get the, when we get the shooting mechanics right, we should drag you back in and let you play a few rounds. And we'll, we'll oh, it's that. gonna scare me though. I'm one of the like. Um, it should. You should be terrified. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm one of the people that like I used to play games like Quake and stuff on God mode. So mm-hmm. ooh, oh, I don't like being scared. <laughs> I, I, my sister used. To, we were playing Ultima um, Seven, I think it was, and yeah, whenever she came up to a boss fight, I'd have to leave the room because just too scared. Um, so so you'll get lots of probably squeals out of me. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So I used to sneak out of my bedroom when I was a kid to go watch because I remember one in, one night in particular, they were what my parents were watching. Um, uh, the James Whale Frankenstein um, with Boris Karloff as, as the monster mm. um, and I had sneaked out and I was sitting at the corner of the lounge sort of watching the television <laughs> with my parents on the lounge just watching this thing and it gets to this scary part <laughs> from the scared the bejesus out of both of them <laughs> busted yeah busted sent to bed yeah. sneaked out again mm. <laughs> So are you a, a horror fiend? Then? Psychological horror. I don't like 
body parts being cut off or torture or anything like that. It's not no, really. So yeah. saw, not, not so, so much. much. Not a fan yeah. of the torture porn, I have to say. Mm, no, I do like. Neither. I do like the yeah, winding the, <laughs> mm. <laughs> tightening the wires of tension in here. <laughs> Just, yeah, but like, I don't get scared that easily. So it's sort of like VR is kind of cool. If something can scare me in VR, then I'm all for it. But mm-hmm. I think probably I'm just sort of mentally prepared, mentally braced for it. It's like oh. No. Uh, we got a jump scare on Margaret the other day in the VR thing, didn't we? Yeah. You, you turned around. You're on me quite easily outside <laughs> of VR. <Okay. laughs> that happens almost every day. But inside yeah. VR, yeah, I'm quite difficult to scare. So if something can really get me, then I'm quite pleased about it. Mm, yeah. nice. And at the moment, our zombies aren't that scary because they don't have the animations. Mm. Right, so they glide towards you and they're just doing oh, idle that's, animation. That's creepy. It really is. <laughs> it really is. And they really stop is. about a metre away doing their idle animation, so I don't think it's scary. They're not, you know, attacking you or all the rest of it. But soon they will. <laughs> oh, I don't Soon yeah. they will. Sounds like a tagline, doesn't it? Soon, soon they will. they will. What? <laughs> exactly. So yeah. what, how far through, like, do you guys have a, a date that you're targeting? We're actually supposed to have a playable level by the end of this week. I don't know if we're going to make okay. that or not. Yeah. Um, because there's still an awful lot to do, like hooking up those animations, putting on the physics constraints, doing the um, the proper first-person rig. Well, it's not really a first-person rig because you're in VR, mm. but it's something similar. It's a rig, you know, so your head's not in the way, but you can see your arms and body. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that sort of shooting stuff, that all has to actually be put together, and I'm not sure we're going to get around that during the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I really, yeah, I really, <laughs> yeah. really hope so, because that would be great. That would be great for Easter. Like yeah. Uh, actually, this out. is the first game we've got some investment in too, so it feels really good yeah. to actually be working on. I'm so jealous. <laughs> 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 we've, yeah, we've not yeah. yet um, figured figured that one out, so that's that's really cool. Um, obviously, you know, having an idea that not only you guys believe in, but mm. others can see how it's gonna um, gonna really uh, engage people. So I think it's the right time, right place. Yeah, kind yeah. Of a thing off of people are looking for media investment, so you can actually find people these days. And last year, no. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's I think it's quite current. I think it's quite recent. That's good. Yeah. So what well, at least in New Zealand, I know you know the US is a different matter. Where yeah, completely different. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, we've always had the option of going to publishers as well. So we could go to Microsoft and say, look, here's a game for the Xbox. Yeah. Fund me, and if you give a good enough mm-hmm. presentation in GDD, then you might just get lucky. There. Yep. Uh, Oculus as well, I think, yeah, are indeed. looking for um, for content and doesn't have to be exclusive. Mm. So, um, yeah. mm, another one. What, what are your guys' thoughts on VR? Like, I'm I've, I'm completely um, skipping. Um, <laughs> That's okay. You can, I mean, you can go through it bit by bit or however you want. Did you notice the swear jar in the corner for Margaret? <laughs> for Margaret. People, there's a swear yeah, jar. Yeah, but Brooke doesn't like me swearing <laughs> on Twitch, so... The f- I, don't, I don't mind you swearing. <laughs> you do not like it that much. Uh, it's difficult. You don't, it's you don't like it as much as I do, put it that way. <laughs> uh, I have to say, for an Australian, to be put to shame by a New Zealand swearer, it's just... <laughs> It's humiliating. Yeah, you're fucking amateur, mate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Australians were swearers than Kiwis. Like. Normally, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Know, we're we're pretty bad. We're more casual sort of way, sort of part of the... Mm. In fact, I was sitting next to somebody in Sydney in a cafe a few weekends ago, and I've never heard anybody use the word fuck so often. <laughs> he had absolutely no fucking idea. He was just fucking... On and on and on, and all with the you know the the, the Sydney accent was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It's back, back. yeah. <laughs> truly, it was just a fucking adjective. It was a fucking verb. It was a fucking noun. It was a fucking <laughs> fuck me. Oh. Wow. And he didn't stop talking. So. Yeah. And was that that was just like a, a normal conversation? It yeah, wasn't it was even an angry guy. He was sitting opposite another guy. They were talking about uh, concrete cutters and um oh um something to do with um compounds and um, not glue but solvents or something like that they're mm-hmm. having a fucking amazing yeah. conversation <laughs> fucking yeah no Australians they're filthy characters yeah. <laughs> as we've seen uh, over the last couple of days uh, in the cricket uh, not that anyone tuning in will probably be into the cricket um, maybe not no <laughs> it's this bizarre game where 
people bowl all under arm at each other. And, yeah. and, and then never <laughs> forget about it for 40 years. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so to answer your question about to the answer VR. Answer your question. Yes, Australians I'm Australian. Also, they do I Australian. 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 He was talking question. about prancing yesterday. Oh, <laughs> he likes to prance. I'm just going to own it. I am Australian. I say answer and I say prancing. <laughs> yeah, you do. And like, how, long have you, how long have you been here? 13 years. Yeah, so yeah long years. enough so you to should give that shit up. Years. To know better, hey. <laughs> <laughs> long enough to give that shit up, mate. I've tried to avoid learning the accent and forgetting where the vowels go and all the rest of it. I'm, we do have a special way of, of pronouncing our vowels. Indeed. Um, but uh, Unlike on the question, Australians. Uh, well, the, th the thing about Australians is they sound weird because they don't really have an accent. That's my opinion. Um, so uh, um, you cannot get that one over the line. Yeah. About VR, um, I, I absolutely love it. From the first time I actually got in it this time around, and I've seen several iterations of it from the past, yeah. right? Um, so I remember going to, I was in Seattle for a conference, a user interface conference, and they had the NASA set up with their VR thing where you have this pixelate, not pixelated, but chunky looking shark in a pool and all the rest of it, yeah. that you could yeah. walk around. In and, a pool. And uh, yes, <laughs> in a pool. <laughs> um, and so, you know, so I saw all that and all the gear was sort of mounted overhead and all the rest of it to mm. actually detect where you were moving. Um, you know, I, I saw that stuff and, you know, how it made your eyes bleed. <laughs> um, and uh, I never actually got to try the Nintendo Boy, the little, uh, the, the um, that, cause they had a virtual reality thing that you put on your desk and you put your face to. No, oh yeah, yes. That, uh, yes, yep, made no, people sick did, as a yeah, dog. It, it had did. terrible uh, judder in it, <laughs> mm. <laughs> things like that. Never had one of those, but I, I saw it come and go mm. and uh, realized it wasn't the time for VR. And then I saw Lawnmower Man and I thought, God, let's hope not. <laughs> um, just something that should never have been released on the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but apparently um, the, guy, the main character in that was supposed to be the guy that actually invented the thing that they called the Sword of Damocles, you know, the, ones that, the one that was yeah. fitted on over your head, uh, from, uh, suspended from above, so if it fell on you, it would kill, kill you. Kill you, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, but this iteration, I saw it and I recognised it once, we'd actually arrived. We had something that was usable, brand new, that you could game with mm. and get totally immersed in. And I thought, okay, we have to do that stuff. But the commercial reality is you can't just do that stuff, not at the moment. Mm. There's not enough market, not enough headsets out there. I hope it's coming, I hope people are joining up. The numbers from PlayStation and PlayStation VR are yeah. very encouraging, but at the moment, when you release a game, it can't just be VR if you're going to spend any money on it at all. Mm -hmm. It's got to be, um, you know, wider than that. So. Yeah. And so, w w are you guys also your um, your new game? Is it just going to be a play uh, through games a non VR? So or, yeah. After the light, you can play it non VR or or yeah. you can play it VR. Okay. So yeah. Really important to have the VR experience because we do want to excel at that. We want people mm. to remember us every time they. You know, yeah. they put their Think headset on and go, you know, I should play that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a tough thing. Like, like, it feels like there's not enough content out to um, to motivate people to invest in the the headsets, the the graphics cards, uh, and everything that you, that you'd need to get. Um, but that is a self fulfilling thing because because no one's buying it. We don't have developers making content um, for it. So yeah, it's kind mm. of this. This site, it's just waiting for, for one or the other to, to kind of just commit well, to Well, this it. will do it. I think if people are like us, and they do both, if yeah. they do the game and then they make it's sure that the VR game. is really, really good, yeah. then I think we're creating the content that will keep the VR actually uh, happening. Some of these actually sent us a message. Now I'm still trying to... Mm -hmm. Sandpaper Australians. Yay! <laughs> Another yes. reference to the cricket, right? <laughs> Legend. <laughs> Apparently, for those who don't know, some kid tried to get the cricketers to sign a piece of sandpaper because he was upset <laughs> about match fixing. Yeah. Tamper. Oh, everyone's very, very uh, the emotions are high about this this piece of sandpaper or this piece of tape. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like I'm flatlining about it. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm okay. very zen about it. <laughs> to the point of not even caring. Oh, Imagine that. No, no, like, yeah, it's going off in our office about it. Yeah, we're all on our high horses. Over, <laughs> Galloping around. Yeah, yeah never Prancing Australia. around. Yeah, it, it is very upsetting about um, cricket matches being fixed. It isn't after all the races, so mm -hmm. I, I think it should be should be done better. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not rugby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay to cheat rugby. <laughs> But not on cricket. <laughs> so what about you guys in VR? Are you doing any fully VR releases or are you just... No, um, we've tried a couple of things. So lately, actually, we're, we're taking more of a kind of medical and healthcare um, mm -hmm. kind of bent. So we're looking into using VR to help um, traumatic brain injury um, rehabilitation. And that will be through using games and, uh, and gamification as well. But we haven't, we haven't thought, you know, we haven't committed to an entertainment, a full-on entertainment um, type game yet. I think we're a bit scared. Um, With good reason. <laughs> a bit, bit nervous um, about doing so. But today actually was the first day of our hackathon. So we're spending this week um, just kind of throwing some ideas around. Like everyone um, is joining different teams uh, with the, the idea to create uh, something, a prototype. Uh, and we've okay. got a, a few um, people playing around with, with VR. So we'll, we'll see what spins out of that. Um, okay, that could be interesting. You'll have to come back on and update yeah, us. Yeah, we will, uh, if anything anything comes from that. But yeah, otherwise, um, it's uh, we've got a real opportunity with VR to, um, to track people's real life movements, which, um, which translates into a lot of interesting things. So, you know, fitness apps where we're kind of looking at so um working out how to create a game that will force someone to do your you know squat um without realizing that they're actually you know doing and doing without squats. killing them in the process by yeah. <laughs> dreadful accident hopefully not <laughs> yeah it's going to be a it's lot very better doable. once we get rid of the cords um, yeah the dinosaur tail i have to say is a real good yeah yeah if you can get rid of that it's a massive i've seen hazard. a couple of uh, products actually for um uh, transceivers that you can plug in. Yeah, I think Oculus uh, is coming out with theirs pretty much now, and Vive as well. We'll oh, have very good. Um, theirs soon. Um, yeah, I think you just plug it into the uh, the headsets. Um, so yeah, and then so many more headsets are coming out as well. Um, yeah, have so you got one of the Microsoft ones like the Asus or? The no, no, we don't. Uh, I think we got the the Google the is it the Daydream and mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we're we're mainly concentrating on the Oculus and Vive though. Okay. Um, we did get hold of an Asus one. We've uh, mm -hmm. got somebody else to look at at the moment. No, sh we're not allowed to lend it out. <laughs> no, we didn't lend it out. Someone's looking at it. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, we got one of those mm -hmm. um, uh, at GDC last year, I think. We well, we ordered it at GDC last year, and it eventually arrived. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was sort of interesting there uh, because there was no lighthouse to sort of track where you were, so um, mm. it was all basically yeah, in the headset, and it seemed to be fairly good. Um, shocking lack of content for it, but now I understand the content problem solved. So mm. um, okay, with, That's well, really basically cool. with open VR, you can sort of address it. You know, you can mm -hmm. develop stuff for it. So uh, yeah, so that's an interesting thing. So a few of those things floating around will m help make a wider market. Um, I think one of the problems with that Asus one that was a bit of a shame is they brought themselves out as the cheaper version of Oculus. Mm. That was how they targeted it. So as soon as you brand and it as the Before they cheaper. released, Oculus actually dropped their price to lower than theirs. Oh so. my God. <laughs> that's, that's such a Facebook thing to do, <laughs> isn't that? Um, yeah. Oh, bugger. Poor Asus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was so that one uh, when we got it, it was actually from Microsoft in Las Vegas, which I had no idea there was a Microsoft in Las Vegas. Yeah, <laughs> you just get the idea that some. I think we should open a Las Vegas branch. I'll yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take one for the team. <laughs> I'll go out and and yeah manage yeah. that one. I don't guys. know how we oh. spent all our development funding. <laughs> <laughs> On strippers and yeah. <laughs> did a lot of client entertaining. Yeah, <laughs> when in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I've never been. You've been to Vegas? No, you? I haven't. You yeah. haven't? Oh, I don't okay. think I do well in the desert. Like you know, pale skin. Like you know, sunburnt within the matter matter of um, seconds. Probably. That's, okay, That's only if you go outside. But... And yeah, and yeah, they yeah. do a lot to keep you inside, don't mm-hmm. they? Yeah. They work very hard. Yeah. So, no, I haven't been to. The, the to closest Vegas. we've been is we've flown over we flew Lake over Mead. Vegas. Yeah. Mm. I think we actually landed. We stopped down. over at Vegas. Did we? Yep, we landed and then we bounced again. Oh, okay. Man, I was out of it that trip. That was on the way to Pittsburgh, wasn't it? Or, on the way back. Or somewhere. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I was from Pittsburgh. Just... Uh, Pittsburgh, we went to see the Human Engineering Research Laboratories. Oh, wow. Because that's the guys we work with on the wheelchair. Wheelchair, yeah. yeah. Speaking Excellent. of VR. Mm-hmm. Yeah, speaking and of the, VR. And yeah, and health related. Absolutely. Guess, yeah, absolutely. Related. That's, related. There seems to be a lot of scope for VR in those places like yeah. health and training essentially mm-hmm. yeah that yeah. anything that you have to um that you know it's really cheap to simulate or to teach people yeah. and and yeah. safe too yes where you yeah. can blow up the helicopter but nobody dies yay <laughs> they just scream a lot yeah. well we've uh, we've done the x-ray training so um for for an outfit called virtual medical coaching uh and their whole um concept was uh, you know, training institutions have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to buy these old decommissioned machines that you know are, are twenty years out of date. Um, and leaking st- radio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and then students, you know, you only get to do a couple of, of tries, and if you muck it up, you've irritated someone. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I oh, put them in your zombie game. Um, <laughs> yeah. like, so anything like that is, uh, yeah, we've made. Um, um, we so we made that in VR. That's now in the the local tertiary um, training institute, and yeah, hopefully saving people from being irritated, uh, yeah. and also giving students <laughs> enough practice um, to to understand it. So what a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lots of lots of uses that way. But I guess you know. It's entertainment we want to crack. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I do love it. I played um, Arizona Sunshine. Have you played that one? No. So that's yeah. another zombie game. Um, I've heard but, of it, though. So Brookhaven yeah. and Arizona Sunshine are the two things that I really mm. got my teeth into zombie games in VR. in, mm. And, uh, yeah, just have a marvellous time in there. Yeah. It's, it's my plan to get fit, really. Like, that's, that's, that's all I've got. <laughs> It'd be too boring trying to do that otherwise. But yeah, no, you know, swing, swinging a sword around and stuff. Like, I, oh, yes, I think I could get on board that, with that. What was the, the fruit one? The, the fruit, fruit ninja. ninja. Fruit ninja, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Slicing yeah. the fruit up, that was fun. Yeah, my <laughs> nephew got fired from his job at Woolworths. No, um, New World. Yeah, playing fruit ninja. In real life? In real life. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I hope he scored well. Like, I don't know. Do you know? I didn't yeah. ask. I should ask. I should know. Should. Was it worth it? Yeah. All Hello, right. Alexandra. She's not talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> some, some other nephew that got fired. <laughs> I thought it was brilliant. Get some watermelon. Watermelons. That would be the good one. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. No, actually, that's one of the things that disappoints me about New Zealand. You have tiny little watermelons. Do we? Tiny. They're quite big. Tiny. Oh, also like tell this. you what, you can buy oh, the they're biggest They're huge, watermelons. long things like this. No, no, no. Yeah? Stop. He's, he's off with the disappointment. Okay. Yeah, right. if you go to the um, Chinese, but in um, the, the one of the markets in um, Avonhead, mm-hmm. watermelons that big. Oh, wow. nice. $25 each, but they are literally nice. Roided up melons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Truly. Well, they're not roided up. Just Australia, they grow that big. That's the nice mm. part. Remember that one you and I, you and me, myself and mm-hmm. Gareth actually brought. Uh, These are bigger. One of those, and we just ate the whole thing that night. You would not be eating the whole thing. we were, <laughs> we were sore. <laughs> we hurt ourselves. Yeah. So the, there's three Chinese supermarkets like in the drinking four liters Church of water. Yeah. Yeah. And the one in the middle has bins. Bins. <laughs> I misunderstood for a second, but now I've got it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so knock yourself out. Okay. No more disappointment for you. Very good. No, I'm not. Yep. <laughs> I am going to go check that out. I would pay $25 for a good melon. And I have, you will. I have been disappointed. <laughs> How are they growing, though? Like, yeah, I don't know. I presume the house, cold. probably. Yeah, yeah, it has to be. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where they come from. Growing them under plastic, it probably. I had a go at growing on, on my veranda this year and I completely failed, or last year, I should say. 
Um, so it came up, it got flowers on it, and that was the end of it. It went away, no melons, no nothing. Mm, okay. Yeah. I also tried tomatoes, and I got two tiny tomatoes. <laughs> our tomatoes are doing well this year, but um, yeah, our broccoli just decided to flower straight away. <laughs> yep, mine too, just shot up big stalks straight yeah. away. Yeah. Uh, maybe the wrong so after spending yet. $80 on gardening stuff, I, I have two uh, two tomatoes worth $40 each. That's... <laughs> But yeah, I hope they tasted good. <laughs> Gourmet tomatoes. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, that's nothing to do with gaming. No, it's gardening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gardening. Sorry. Brooke, Margaret, and Nadia talking about gardening. Gar- yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll give up this life of, of game development, and we'll. Um... Not me. I would starve. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, well, you know, I can starve here yeah, too, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't make your back ache so much though. That's true. And it keeps you out of the sun. Uh, it which does. Is good. <laughs> it's always good. What okay, else you got what else on your did I have? Here? Um was basically, yeah, um I figured out as I was putting this together, we got uh at Cerebral Fix really good at making kids games. Mm-hmm. Um and it turns out that yeah, that tends to be the, the majority of our contract work actually. Um was was kids games uh which is great They're, we've learned a lot about um doing usability uh mm-hmm. with with you know the the difference between a three-year-old and a five-year-old is just massive um so uh yeah user testing is always really important uh we also make our own games um to just on the kid stuff oh sorry yeah yeah um oh, I can take back back back. Back. Yeah. oh that's really clever. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a right button trick? I did not know that. No, no, I was just bringing up the arrow. All right. Ah. <laughs> uh-huh. so I wasn't watching. I wasn't watching. <laughs> we've, we've, uh, uh, so we've done a couple of kids games. We did Hoover Hover, which was um, the one yeah. for... Um, what Now? For What Now. Yeah. That's right. Uh, we what did now is a TV program in New Zealand? It is, yeah. yeah. Uh, Anybody who's not in New Zealand, a staple for for Kiwi it kids, is, truly. Uh, yeah, it's been around for a long time. Grow up, yeah. Watching what now? <laughs> Indeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did um, eat eat a rainbow mm-hmm. uh, for somebody, which was uh, basically teaching kids to eat uh, vegetables um, by. Actually, this little girl sliding around, running into walls occasionally, <laughs> but uh, trying to eat things as it fell from the sky. That was sort of funny. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, but mostly, we we haven't done a lot of kids' games. It turns out the kids are absolutely horrified of zombies. It just it yeah, changes funny them. That. So, yeah, and, and so it hasn't been a great life. More disturbing, successful. though, when you find a kid who isn't. Truly. <laughs> <laughs> really? yeah. oh, I had the best Halloween story mm. about that. The difference between two kids, both both little girls about nine years old. Yeah. So we had one come to one come to our door, and I was wearing Margaret had actually put on my makeup, and I had these horrific scars that were basically made up. I'll show you the photos. That yeah. was really great. And each <laughs> section of my face was um, rouged. Well, you know, makeup put on to make it a slightly different colour, so it looked like I was assembled from various oh, things. Oh, creepy. And, uh, yeah. It, was really well done yeah so these kids come to the door with dad and all the rest of it and i grab the lolly jar and i go out and i open the door and this girl screams blue murder and shoots off down the road oh, and no. dad had to run off after her oh, that's a shame. <laughs> the other kids waiting there there's one little kid that comes up and she's in a fairy costume of some sort and she's Aww. got dark makeup on and all the rest of it and she's not scared at all mm. and uh, but i noticed her wing was torn and all the rest of it and i said and what are you supposed to be? And she said, I'm a dead fairy. Wow. <laughs> that's dark. Oh, that's great. You, you take extra. So. <laughs> You're my favourite. <laughs> she really was. Wow, that's dark, That's though. the kid I liked. <laughs> dead fairy. Oh, my God. Yeah, the torn wing, all the rest of it. Yeah, she had it down. I'm not afraid of Blood you, on the face. patchwork Australian yeah. bastard. <laughs> no. no. Not at all. Yeah, so sorry, sorry, interruption there, but yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, so yep, kids, uh, kids games, our own games. Um, we've um, we've done really well at doing really badly uh, at making <laughs> our own game. Just nice twist. Yeah. Like. <laughs> it's that sort of the way it works, though, isn't it? We learn more from our mistakes than we do from our successes. Fail fast. That's just yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's all about failure, basically, <laughs> <laughs> and embracing it, you know, yeah. and being being okay with it, because then you then you can learn from it. Um, but yeah, our, our latest one, uh, kind of Ninja Tobu, that one's, um, and we don't really know, is it because it has Ninja in the name? We're not sure, but this one's gone on to have over a million uh, downloads. Um, we have 24,000 or 25,000 people playing daily. Um, not so much of a failure then. Yeah. Uh, no, what, well, what do you actually you've do actually failed it? failing. What's, what's the gameplay? Uh, it's, it's the most simple mechanic. It's on mobile and you're just, yeah, it's like a um, there's levels or there's an endless runner mode and you're just um, using your ninja to, to climb the wall, kill enemies and... Um, complete levels um you know kind of get through all that so more it's a puzz action puzzler um kind of kind of thing is there a story to it no, <clears throat> no. so because there's two things I've, I've found one if you make really good gameplay people sort of make up their own story to play yeah. the game um which is sort of like going back to those mud games all the rest of it you know yeah. a little bit of prompting and your, your imagination takes over and makes the game for you which is one way to do things That's and the other one is a game is also an awesome opportunity to tell a story if you've got one. Mm. So you had one called Shadow Rising. R Shadow Rising. Yeah. Um, yep. And that one, I remember the books coming out about that. That you know that one imparted so much story just with the visuals. And uh, yeah. which I think is what is probably set Ninja Tobu apart is is that art style as well. And I think as you're you know people will be in. By, like you know engaged in that which will then inspire that story um creation in their own uh kind of mind so yeah no it might be that actually because there is no real story uh or anything to it but i could so. imagine ma playing that game and making up the story yeah. that goes with it we've know, had fan fiction yeah. Yeah. And, yeah you know exactly. people writing that is people know, making up the story yeah. yeah um which is which is neat uh and That's then fantastic Hopefully, yeah. We we like to make more of our our own games in the. You want to start future. failing at failing? Yeah, <laughs> that would be excellent. Get that, really, really, I'd love really to fail at good failing. at that failing yeah. at failing. That would be oh, ooh, yeah. The day we fail at that failing. gives me a tingle. Like just on the right expression. So you're on the right path. <laughs> I hope so. Um, and then yeah, we do do some some VR. She well. said do do. do. We do do. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> is that a massive faux pas? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just something we like to point out. Yeah. Often, as, any, as often as anybody. We say it to clients. <laughs> yeah. We've been known to point it out to clients. You said doo doo. <laughs> Sometimes it's okay. Uh, real Sometimes mature, guys. Real not mature. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're nothing if not mature. <laughs> I don't that fun. Um, okay, yeah, we. we develop for you <laughs> um, but not not to the level that you guys um, have kind of yeah been able to do that that super immersive mm -hmm. um, which is you know what you want like that's why you have VR right absolutely um, and so yeah we haven't yet figured out how to take advantage of, of that yeah. a lot of video game stuff is world creation that's what you're really doing yeah. you're creating a world and VR is the perfect opportunity to create a world that people can actually really explore yeah. they can look look around and see everything so. uh, one day one day for us <laughs> um and yeah what else do we do this is how we do it uh so yep fail fast and carry on so embracing that failure um big on that agile uh, which is um probably less of a, you know i i still think of it as the new kind of kid on but it's actually it's been around since 2000 really mm -hmm. um or even before that you know with like extreme programming type things um but at, at its core lean and and then you pick the the th um, tool set that uh, is going to best help you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and then what we look for. So this is. I just want to show you guys our uh, kind of um, contribution tiers. So this is where people. Um, this is what <laughs> um, ranking we give to people in the in the business, uh, which is probably. So you've gamified employee rankings. We have. <laughs> 
sparkly things. <laughs> White mage and black mage uh, from a awesome. bit theatre there. Um, but yeah, we've got uncommons and rares and epics and legendaries, uh, and and hopefully they're all growing to to mythicals. So um, that's yeah. We we really rate sharing of knowledge of yeah. um, communication more so than your development prowess or or how many um tools you know how to use you can learn all that Mm -hmm. um and as long as you've got you know if you've got the communication side of things you can then share all that absolutely uh and that's um i think that's probably been the the biggest learning experience for for us at cfix um over the last few years is it's not about you know how much you know it's about how much you can learn mm-hmm. <laughs> definitely absolutely yeah, um, it does. your capacity and to that'll be learn. more and more as we move on because the pace of these things changes the tool sets change Work. and yeah you you really have to be a versatile person you have to be able to throw yourself in learn it move mm-hmm. yeah yeah because when we when we started out we were building things in flash weren't we and yeah. you know try well, and make a game <laughs> in flash these are, you're not going to go anywhere very fast um or at least not to uh to all the platforms and i think that's i guess probably more where gaming is moving these days is to it doesn't matter what platform you pick it up on it's almost you know you you can engage in that game so mobile to to pc you know fortnite you, you, you can play on mobile. Did you now. see Margaret learning Fortnite? No. We streamed no, it. Total waste of time. We streamed it. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't kill anybody, but we had fun. <laughs> I bloody say, um, last time I logged on to Counter Strike, um, just the abuse that I got from, <laughs> oh, fuck off, noob, Lee. <laughs> oh, like, nice. Oh, no. oh, I'm just trying to learn, guys. <laughs> 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 um, Jesus. But yeah, it's, 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 it could be a brutal place yeah, truly. To, to learn. Yeah. Um, okay. My strategy Topical was to hang around until everybody else had died, really. <laughs> yeah. And Why find that, stuff. Basically. And then sneak out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very, very carefully and get killed. Yeah. Topical yeah. and political thing, though. Do you actually play as a girl or do you play as a guy? Uh, as a girl. Yeah. You do? Yeah. Um, does that actually make a difference, do you think, to the amount of abuse you get? I don't know. I, I definitely... Well, how would she know? Yeah. Well, unless you've done both, I guess that's. Mm. I guess that is the case. But um, no, I I remember getting asked once by one of the students that we were talking. (laughs) Asked. (laughs) That's a different story. Yes. (laughs) Truly. Happens in high school. (laughs) (laughs) Happens in Vegas. No, a a girl, uh, basically one of these uh, colleges that we gave a talk to, um, a girl came up afterwards and said, "Is it really safe to be in gaming?" And that caused me to do a bit of an exploration of um, uh, sort of what she was talking about because I my, my immediate response is oh yeah of course it's safe it's mm. gaming you know um, and it turned out not to be the case that girls are actually getting a really hard time on forums getting a really hard time in multiplayer games mm. um, so a lot of actual abuse out there and one female game developer actually had uh, rape and death threats made against her yeah yeah the funny thing about that though which I absolutely loved was she was. Uh, such a social hacker she managed to find out enough about the guy to get into his Facebook find his mum's phone number and talk to his mum good <laughs> good good that was the best that's outcome I'd ever seen and he was like a 13 year old kid you know he wasn't of course uh, yeah and that's that you know the anonymity gives people such big balls I guess yeah, to, yeah. Um, to kind of you know things that they would never dream of saying to another person in real life like they're suddenly yeah. Oh, okay. I'm gonna. So I never experienced any of that. Um, in fact, I had the probably, um, and maybe maybe it's the the time that I started um, gaming and stuff. But I had the you know you got extra items for being a girl. Like you had people willing oh, to help okay. you out um, a lot for for being a girl and uh, and things like that. No, I never. Um, you know thankfully i never experienced that level of abuse and it's awful for the girls um Mm -hmm. and and guys that um that experience it because you know it is something that these people the trolls would never have the guts to say to your face in real life um so no i don't know i just got abused by a cyclist outside (laughs) (laughs) i don't yeah no (laughs) 
bloody cyclists <laughs> don't get me started on cyclists you know biking to a breast into the, the oh, bloody yeah. road not caring um riding on the footpath when they could be riding on the fucking cycleway right yes, next door right mm-hmm. yeah. and 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 oh it's all well and good for the oh no we're a, we're a road bike and uh you know a road vehicle and you have to um, respect us and yet then get oh, off the fucking footpath and when it suits them though oh no I'm a pedestrian now. and cars are really 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 making it all unsafe for us we just so got a thing saying Barack right? Obama died no well, they've put a link there Barack Obama died don't go to it <laughs> yes. would be my right. best advice <laughs> yeah. let's hang back from that <laughs> Yeah. Isn't he in New Zealand at the moment? How though. funny to introduce a virus live on Twitch. Yeah, yeah. Didn't, we can be the ones that fall for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, okay. That's got me puzzled. Because I'm sure he's in New Zealand. Is he? Yeah, because he came in to talk no, to no, the no, Air New Zealand um, folks. Um, so, yeah. I think he was. Maybe it's just something about, you know. I don't know. He didn't get the applause he was expecting or something. <laughs> yeah. No, he's definitely not dead. Okay. So, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> Good try, we though. We don't believe you. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> Although, I'm going to feel foolish if later he turns out to be dead. <laughs> Do you yes, you, you heard it here on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> on, on, this, on this show. <laughs> and now, cutting live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a yeah. Reporter in the field. What a jolly Jake. Well, no, that would be out of out of range of our Wi-Fi. Yeah, true. We can, we can cut live to our reporter in the corridor yeah. at a stretch. <laughs> He's getting comments from some people. Um, but well done. This, like, do you think that they're just um, jumping around? Oh, he's... Play know. it, lol. <laughs> oh, nope. Yeah. Play it, lol, no. <laughs> Thank you, but no. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we've actually reached the end of our stream. No way. We have. We've we've yammered on for an hour. Wow. So, God. Who thought four slides could get I you that far? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, thanks to everybody for watching. So, Brooke and Margaret from Stickman Media and yes. Nadia Thank from you very Cerebral much, Fit. Nadia. Thank you very much, Nadia. No, that thank was... you guys for having me. You probably won't have me again. <laughs> Actually, that was, that was a lot of fun. So, uh, I think we'll do that again. And I definitely think we should put you in VR. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm <laughs> Sometime gonna, I'm soon. I'm going to piss myself that one. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Can you guarantee that? Because you know, <laughs> that, that's awesome viewing. Although, that's, that's probably a, a different revenue stream there. <laughs> Yeah, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> All right. And on that note, we'll say goodbye. So bye for now. <laughs>